Hello, my name is Mohammed Farialfian. Now I would like to reveal the racism in educational institution in Britain. As the development of Britain has increased rapidly, it also affects people to be curious to move to Britain with the reason of better life. Many of immigrants from other countries tend to choose living in Britain. Recently, immigrants in Britain can be counted as much as possible, for example from India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, the Caribbean, Hong Kong, and South Africa. According to the Office for National Statistics, the latest immigration estimate for the year ending March 2015 is 636,000 with a confidence interval of 37,000 a statistically significant increase from 552,000 in March 2014. Based on this statement, it is evidenced that most of people are interested to live in Britain, so that Britain has larger number of immigrants for each year. There are some reasons that influence immigrants from other countries, such as searching for work, going home to live, following the relatives, and joining for formal study. I interested to discuss about one of the term that has been mentioned before. As the result of immigration, there are many ethnic groups living in Britain. Immigration also can cause the multiculturalism in society, especially in Britain. Multiculturalism is adapted to the diverse cultural, multicultural society, and multicultural education in different culture. Here, I would focus into the effect of the different ethnic group which live in Britain. As we know that immigrants do not have the same right with British people, so that it causes unfair treatment for immigrants, especially from black people. Nowadays, racism is one of problem faced by the immigrants of people who move to Britain. Racism means the inequality treatment towards certain group. Aaron Porter, said. We have a long way to go to close the participation gap for black students in education. If black students feel unwelcome in classrooms this must be addressed by tackling the very real racism that still exists on our campuses. About 20 people at Oxford Middle School every day make fun of my skin color and racial offenses. Yeah, so I'm not the darkest Mexican. <laughs> is harsh. They they talk about my race. I'm Russian, but there's nothing wrong with that. They ask me to make guns for them. They want me to play Russian roulette. Not funny, man. I'm just a Russian. You should have been Russian. People always say stereotypes like that I like fried chicken. You like fried chicken, but not all African Americans like fried chicken. And they say that I like Kool Aid. I do like Kool Aid, but who doesn't like Kool Aid? Me. Kool Aid. <laughs> <laughs> you know you like. Twenty people. About eleven. 
In preventing racist bullying, what schools can do? There is no easy answer. In a school day crammed with demands, dealing with bullying is one of the most difficult problems facing teachers. There are no easy answers or instant solutions. Therefore, I will give some suggestions that might be effective to reduce racism in school. School can ensure that. 1. Kids are told from day one that bullying of any kind is not tolerated. 2. They carry out an anonymous survey of the kids to find out if racist bullying is a problem and then act upon it. 3. Parents are informed that the school is committed to ensuring racial harmony among their kids, staff and the community. 4. All staff and governors are trained in equality issues working with parents, supporting victims, changing negative behavior and school procedures for resolving bullying. When we talk about professionals, just for clarity, I'm thinking of accountancy, I'm thinking of law. So we're talking about occupational groups that have exams, they have training, and these act as barriers to entry. So it's really important to remember that actually professions are in the discrimination business. Now, we want this. As a society, you want to know that a doctor or a lawyer has been through an elaborate system of training. That's, that's really important. It becomes a problem if these professions, instead of discriminating on things like intellectual potential or expertise, they start discriminating on things like ethnicity or gender. What you'll find is that some of these um, organizations, they actually cultivate an identity that excludes these groups that I was talking about. So a number of ways that this can manifest itself is people actually self-select. So they will opt, they will look at these professions and they will opt out. They will say, okay, that doesn't look like it's for me, so I won't get involved. Also, these professions, they tend to choose their candidates from Russell Group universities. And typically speaking, what we find is that minority ethnic groups are underrepresented in, minor, in Russell Group universities. And there's a recent report actually from the LSE which shows that minority ethnic groups are less likely to be even offered university places compared to their white counterparts. And to extend that a little bit more, it's really important to understand the nature of the ethnic penalty. So when I say ethnic penalty, when you consider minority ethnic groups in the workplace, what you find is that typically when you control for things like age, education, location, minority ethnic groups tend to be paid less than their white counterparts. There's actually a hierarchy. And in this hierarchy at the bottom, you've got black African, black Caribbean, and also Pakistanis. Well, culture is actually really important in these circumstances. So most organizations will actively cultivate a culture. So if you think of it, that, uh, that's related to their organizational behavior. It's related to their values as well. Now, the issue comes is when these cultures don't welcome or celebrate people who don't meet the requirements of a pre-established stereotype. So, for example, if someone's got dreadlocks or has got a turban or has even got dark skin, that may not constitute or agree with the established professional appearance that is within that organization. The idea of measuring is a first step, I think. A lot of organizations don't measure this properly. Uh, what Peter Drucker says is what gets measured gets managed. The second thing I would say, and this is what I say to organizations who I speak with, is why are you interested in diversity? So try to understand what, what the driving force is behind that. So 
Is it to do with legislation? Do they want to try and adhere to the legal requirements of the organization? Is it a strategic imperative? Is it strategically important for an organization to be able to, to have diversity in order to grow? Or is it in line with their uh, values, which we talked about earlier? And finally, new statistics show that a majority of black people have little chance of working as a graduate teacher in the British education system. According to the annual report by the Graduate Teacher Training Registry, overall about 17% of black African applicants and nearly 29% of black Caribbean applicants were taken on by teacher training institutions across all subjects in 2013. That is in comparison to almost 47% of white applicants who were accepted in the program. On a specific subject, statistics show that only 3 out of 30 black or mixed-race applicants who wanted to be history teachers were accepted into postgraduate teacher training courses. The exposure has provoked claims of institutional racism in the British education system. And to discuss that further, we're now joined by Nargis Mbalaghi, Press TV's correspondent, who's joining us live now from the British capital. Nargis, I would imagine that there's a lot of anger since this report has come out. Well, firstly, I think this isn't really an issue that gets a lot of mainstream attention. You might find this report, for example, in a few of the more left-leaning newspapers in the country. So it's really important for is the people that it affects. And among um, the ethnic minority and especially the black community, this, has, uh, this report will be nothing new and it will be a part of a historic anger that they felt in the education system. And I think it's really important to stick together these different um, statistics to get a wider picture. So what we've just heard right now about history teachers applying into the education system here, um, only three black people were accepted onto courses. That's only 10% of the people that applied in comparison to 26% of successful applicants in their, in, the white, in their white counterparts. But let's face facts, three, if, if three is 10%, then only 30 uh, people applied, black applicants applied. And that in itself is a problem. There's a low number of people applying for the education system. Why is that? When you look up, for example, to, to the level higher in university, um, there's really a low level of black academics and professors and the professors of uh, black descent who are working in the universities here say that there is an environment of racism that starts really right from the bottom of the education system right to the top um, where um, there is a lack of, of professors so for example in the UK there's just 85 uh, black professors out of 18,500. So there you can really see the disparity. We also see it, um, although not across the wide scale of the education system, of course, there's many people that are studying here, but when you look at the top echelon, so-called, of the university system, so for example, in Oxford and Cambridge in the 2012 academic year, 21 of Oxford and Cambridge's colleges um, had no black students accepted into their courses. Now what Cambridge for example said at the time was that was because there wasn't enough black students getting their required grades, so A stars or A's at, at A level. So they said that there was only 315 black students across the country that got the required grades, which is great for Cambridge and it sounds like a good reasoning and logical reasoning for them, but that really shows the root cause of the problem. Why should there be so few uh, black students in this academic system getting those top grades. We can't insinuate or uh, say that for some reason because they're black they're not, um, they're not capable of getting those grades. So it kind of indicates to a wider establishment problem that's not getting these students through the system, through the academic system successfully and that's why when we get to them teaching or in, in the academic professions higher up as professors and we're seeing the numbers dwindling as you go through the system. Okay, Nargis, thanks a lot for that.